Hello and welcome back to yet another Wet Spot unboxing video. We got all sorts of cool stuff yet again this week, this lovely Monday as we film this. Take a look at some of the cool stuff we got. Oh, there we go. Starting off, Hemi Ancestress SPL128, the blue Phantom Pleco, which we got in in two sizes actually, if you can believe it. It's a beautiful Pleco found in the Orinoco River Basin. It'll hit about, oh, seven inches in length in captivity, although it is kind of a slow grower. It's not gonna shoot up overnight on ya. Uh, they're absolutely beautiful, this dark bluish green with kind of nice white blue spots that really intensify as they get some age to them. Uh, they're an omnivore. They're gonna eat both protein and plant-based uh, matters, uh, but they are gonna be actually a pretty effective algae eater and a pretty tolerant pleco of a lot of different, uh, different types of water parameters I've found, although Preferably, they'd be kept in warmer water uh, that's nice and clean, that has some current. Here, uh, we're showing off a few of our blue phantoms with a tank that we actually just added a wave maker to. A uh, little known fact, a lot of plecos in the wild would occur in like, almost rapid-like conditions where the water is very fast moving. So I decided to experiment a little bit and throw a little bit more power in there for them, water movement-wise. Next up, we have a nice little jewel from the Congo River Basin. This is Dystocotus decamaculatus, the dwarf Dystocotus. Uh, it's a wonderful little fish. Gets about three inches long in captivity. Uh, unlike some of its larger relatives, it's nowhere near as bad at eating plants and nowhere near as nippy as some of its very cool, but admittedly more rough and tumble uh, congeners can be. Here in the store, we've had success keeping them with things like smaller Cynodonis catfish or Congo tetras, and admittedly, yeah, sometimes they'll nibble on the leaves of some of our Anubias, so definitely wouldn't want to throw these guys into any sort of plant -a tank but they're great little guys. They do tend to, despite what you're seeing right here as they're figuring out their dominance, uh, actually group together quite well. It's a beautiful little, uh, more black water leaning fish in the wild. Uh, unfortunately though, very, very uncommon in the hobby. Okay, so next up we have a lovely little fish, one of my favorites, depending on your opinion. This could either be called the blue quarry, or if you're being a little less generous, would be the slate quarry, because it's a beautiful bluish gray. Uh, this is Corridor's Kong color, also comes from the Orinoco. It's a wonderful little quarry, uh, one of the smaller ones. Gets a very stout two, two and a quarter inches in length. Uh, like most quarries, these are going to be a general omnivore. They'll eat a little bit of plant matter. They'll eat a lot more uh, animal matter. So you want to diversify the diet quite a bit, but you definitely want to make sure they're in a group of at least three of their own kind, if not more, as well as like you're seeing here, making sure to have soft sand because they're shoved little cute little faces right there into that substrate. And unfortunately, if it's rougher, say not very fine, uh, it can actually shave off their whiskers, and that can really lead to health problems down the road, so make sure the sand's soft. I really like this species because as they grow and settle in, like this big guy we're seeing at the top of the screen, they will darken that color quite a bit, and males actually get a really nice large orange dorsal fin. It's a great little fish. Okay, let's take a look at these guys next. It's an awesome catfish. You don't see these every day, unfortunately. These are Hemicynodontus, or depending on who you believe, just Cynodontus, membranacea, the mustache catfish. Awesome, awesome fish that has a pretty wide range about a few countries in Africa, but is normally found and I would assume collected from the Congo Basin. Uh, these are gonna be big dudes. They'll hit at least a foot, 14 inches in captivity. There are reports of larger on some particularly long-lived specimens. Uh, they are planktivores in nature. So what they'll do, and we see it a little bit right there, is they'll use those delicate little marbles to kind of parade around the substrate looking for tiny morsels. Uh, so they'll even eat pretty small particulate foods. Uh, definite carnivore here, and they'll eat darn near whatever you'll throw out of my found. 
Um, as you can see here, pretty okay with each other, especially as juveniles. Long term, you'd probably need a pretty large tank boat to just house one, but as well to house multiple, they will get a little feistier with each other as they age, but otherwise, very gentle, large, wonderful fish. Alright, next up on the docket, yet another fish found in the Congo. Uh, these are African knife fish, Xenomistus nigri. It's a very, very interesting fish that unfortunately has become a lot rarer in the hobby. They'll hit up to 8 inches in captivity, I think would be generous. Again, there are reports of up to a foot, but I've seen uh, some fairly long-lived ones at the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago, one of my favorite public aquariums that weren't quite that big, and I got to watch their growth quite literally every year. Didn't get that big. Uh, unlike a lot of other knife fish, they have pretty large eyes. These are not electrogenic, like say your black ghost knives, so they can actually be kept nicely in schools and with fish too large to be eaten. Uh, they are carnivores. They are just wonderful fish, but they lack in color, they make up for in personality. Uh, just absolutely a lot of fun to see them all parade around the aquarium, you know, start poking their noses in places. And despite what you'll frequently read, I've had a lot of luck getting these guys to stay out consistently during the day as well. Alright, who we got next? Another big weirdo! I love these guys! These are the Indian leaf fish, Nandus Nandus. A very, very weird little fish. Uh, so what these guys would do in their native range is they would typically sit on the bottom, pretend to be a dead leaf, and then they would be an ambush predator. So they'll kind of sit there quite literally and wait for someone to come by and then strike at it and eat it. They're deceptively large growing in captivity. You don't see a lot of them that are much larger than four or five inches, but they can get up to six or seven. Uh, eventually we'll get some size. They seem to be quite peaceful with each other and don't seem to really bother other fish so long as they're too large to eat. Uh, I've had good luck in the past pairing these guys with, as you can see here, larger rasboras that maybe long term aren't a great fit, but at least at the two inches they're at now would be fine. As you can see, even here, fresh out the bag after acclimating, there's a lot of sitting. A little bit of exploring their environment, but don't get these if you're looking for something particularly active. The nice thing, given how small these guys are, is that it's a lot easier to train them onto frozen foods like bloodworms in the interim as opposed to larger specimens. Alright, next up, we finally get to a Malawi this go around. This is Alonicara Stuart Grantai Chalumba. I guess you could call it the Chalumba Peacock, although I'm sure there's probably more of that location. It's a nice peacock uh, that's going to grow around six inches in captivity like other peacocks. It's sturdy, it's not too feisty uh, like most of the congeners. It is going to get some absolutely beautiful blue that you're not seeing on any single fish that you're about to see footage wise they're just a little too small and of course females aren't going to get much coloration but really really pretty blue to the body blue to the fins blue everywhere it's a great great fish if you're looking for that nice iridescent kind of royal blue uh, as you can see here we will sometimes mix them with other uh, malawis our tanks are really pretty heavily stocked here in the store so we don't have to worry quite as much about them getting out competed but long term, if you want them to show the most color, you'd want to make sure that there's nothing that will bully them too much, you know, suppress some of that color, having multiple males that will deaden a little bit of that. When they're in subdominant coloration, you'll see a little bit of red poking through here and there, uh, and the blue will dull a little bit, but it's a really, really nice peacock, especially for those that have patience and want something a little bit more off the beaten path. All right, we'll see what we got here. Uh, yet another cichlid. This is a really neat little fish, Neutropolis nematopus. Uh, these are sometimes called the neat cichlid, or my favorite name, the poor man's trophius. Uh, these are going to be in nature, found in Nicaragua and Costa Rica. They'll get about five inches long, and they're normally found in pretty fast-flowing areas, so they'll spend a lot of time near the substrate, uh, kind of hopping around so they can be very fast, especially when you're trying to catch them. A lot of speed in these little buggers. Uh, not the most colorful fish ordinarily. They're kind of a pinkish gray with that nice dark blotch on the side. Uh, what is really fascinating is, like a lot of other Central American cichlids, once these guys start to go into breeding coloration, 
both parents have changed and where they get their name of. The poor man's Trophius is, uh, their color kind of reverses. Uh, spawning males would be this beautiful jet black and that black spot kind of near the shoulder area will actually turn a bright white. It's a very, very pretty fish if you can get them to pair off. Uh, a lot of personality, a lot of activity. They are a bit on the feistier side, but overall a really cool kind of oddball special. Okay. Completely out of left field, the Lake Inlay Red Tail or Hovering Loach, Petrovictus Brevis. It's a really cool, gregarious little loach that comes from Lake Inlay in uh, Myanmar. These guys will get about two inches in length in captivity, and as they age, they'll get some really nice kind of pinkish red to them, as well as that tail obviously will turn this nice kind of scarlet. Uh, in nature, they'd be found in Lake Inlay, which is a very interesting karstic lake. Uh, in, if I'm remembering rightly, right around the border of Thailand in Myanmar. I get a little off on that, I'm a fish guy, not a geography guy, but that said, uh, these guys like to be kept in groups. There's enough of them, they will spend a lot of time hovering around the tank in midwater. And as you can see here, they also have this weird characteristic where it seems like the spine is almost bent. Promise, it's not a deformity, it just seems to be kind of a weird quirk of the animal, but they're very, very peaceful, very, very fun to watch little fish. Uh, unfortunately not commonly seen, but like I mentioned, since Lake Inlay is karstic, meaning that there's a lot of limestone in the area, they can actually tolerate slightly harder waters. Uh, preferably you could even keep them at 7.2 pH, 7.4 with some water hardness and they'd be just fine. Alright, last but not least, this is a new one but an old one. Uh, these are the Red Top Silver Platys. It's a variety that I don't believe we've ever carried before, but of course, anyone a little familiar with aquarium at this point probably has run across platys or kept platys at some point. This is a particularly handsome variety in my opinion. Uh, I really like the reds and kind of whitish silver on these guys. In nature, of course, which these are kind of far divorced from at this point, platys would be native to Mexico, Guatemala, Nicaragua, down to Belize. Males will get about two inches, females be a stockier two and a half, three inches. Uh, and of course in nature they'd be grazers. Mostly omnivorous, but definitely a bit of a lean for uh, algae. Definitely a lot of live birds are good for that. In that video with the neats you can actually see them, the mollies in that tank clearing that rock very quickly. Uh, but these just have that really nice reddish hue, that nice white. I was glad to see these arrive. I've, uh, after many, many years of fish keeping and of course growing up as a surly teenager and saying, oh, live bears, who could like those? I've really come to appreciate just how much care and dedication can go into making some of these strains so desirable for us consumers as well. Really, really nice color. It's a great little fish, a lot of fun to watch available as of time of posting both here in the store as well as through online sales so if you saw something you can't live without be free to stop in or shoot us an email and we'll be happy to uh, add the next denizens to your aquarium <laughs>